Hey, it's Mike here, and today my response to the YouTube video, this is your body on vegetables, which sounds like it's along the lines of like, this is your body on crack or something, <laughs> and it might be the follow-up to last week's video where this doctor, Dr. Ken Berry, tells you essentially that you shouldn't be eating any vegetables, more or less, no, this is not like that. No, this is actually a response video to the Institute of Human Anatomy basically asking the question, is the human body designed to be plant-based. Did human beings evolve to eat a primarily plant-based diet? The comment section is probably gonna be something special. We're gonna hit on a bunch of different topics, starting with teeth and teeth structure, and of course, those good old canines here, and even touch on hippos, a bit of a tangent, but still fun to talk about. Also, the human digestive system, intestine length ratios and stuff, the cecum. So when it comes to answers, we're gonna be cecum them out. Se we're gonna cecum out. And while I agree with a lot of the points that they make in this video, I have to respectfully disagree with a few of them and then of course add some that they did not talk about that I think are very important, perhaps the most important ones. And right before we get to the video, lightning fast announcement, the plant-based bundle has just gone live for a limited amount of time. We're talking about a ridiculous $8,800 worth of high quality eBooks, courses and guides for only 50 bucks. You've got a bunch of muscly people like Simnet Nutrition, and a bunch of attractive people. I was not pictured in there. I won't take it personally. Anyway, all that knowledge is linked below, but let's just get to the video here, which is this one, which has 300,000 views, and the channel itself has well over 4 million subscribers, and it describes itself as a private human cadaver lab. So I just have to say, don't worry, there is very little footage of human cadavers, and I will give a three second trigger warning for people that don't wanna see that. I know vegans are specifically sensitive to that. And I just wanna say, I think it's really cool that they educate people in this way, videos like why drinking water is important, looking at kidneys is awesome content. So that's the positive. And this is of course the intersection of two fields, anatomy and nutrition. So maybe not all the nutrition claims are perfect. So let's nitpick. Did human beings evolve to eat a primarily plant-based diet? Again, ethically, I think that this has been answered just in the research on people who are fully plant-based, they're able to thrive. Therefore, it is my ethical position that people should not be eating animals because they don't have to. But then also from just a machinery human anatomy perspective, I'm so interested in seeing why certain foods are healthy or not for us. Is it appropriate to compare the human digestive system with other mammals or are we just too unique given the fact that we can cook and process our food? This is giving us way too much credit. I know plenty of people that do not know how to cook. <laughs> anyway, jokes aside. In today's video, the help of the cadavers here in the lab. There's a dead body behind me and I'm this calm. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm sure it's completely normal and it's just part of his profession to be fine there. I'm just freaked out about dead bodies. I don't know. Very upfront, right from the beginning, I'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't eat. I'm just here to make you feel good about the choices that you already made so that you like and subscribe to the video. I'm joking, I don't actually know what their motivations are at this point. Anyway, the first specific topic that he hits on is canines. So first up is canine teeth. However, the presence of canine teeth does suggest in the evolutionary past of a creature, there was some meat consumption. Now, largely, this is a four minute section just talking about why this isn't a reliable marker. I mean, you can look at this deer with these like fangs and you know that that's not the smoking gun that they have a carnivorous past. Now, a common argument you'll hear from proponents of a plant-based diet is that canine teeth are not exclusive to carnivores and that you'll see canine teeth in many different herbivores in the animal kingdom with the hippos being the most common example I've heard over the years. And that is definitely true. I mean, hippos have enormous canine teeth. But then he does make a statement about hippos that stuck out to me a little bit. But it's also important to understand that hippos have been known to consume a lot of meat. I had to fact check this one. All signs pointed to this 2015 study that looked at it in depth. And it's been summarized as saying that hippos occasionally eat meat. It does not in any way appear that they eat a lot of meat, so maybe just a little bit of bad choice of words there. Well, there have been a lot of instances of them opportunistically eating some meat, whether they are scavenging a body or just being aggro and killing another hippo and eating them, for example. That appears to be the exception to their otherwise 100% plant-based diet, a rare one. Sadly, their habit of hungry hippoing random carcasses is probably why they have several fold incidence of anthrax mortality. That's a bacteria they can get from eating dead animals. 
So I think they're poorly adapted. They're bad omnivores if they are at all. And those canines, I really don't think have anything to do with their meat eating anyway. I can't help but mention the actual most common context that this is brought up in. And that is like uncle meat lover guy being like, I have these massive canines, therefore I'm a predator and need to eat steak two or three times a day. And that is just wildly inaccurate. He brought up the hippo thing as what vegans usually use, but I feel like vegans are more likely to use the gorillas have massive canines eat zero meat meme, which are more closely related to us, more relevant anyway. The presence of canine teeth doesn't actually suggest that a creature is supposed to eat meat. And as he says, you know, these canines can be developed to either intimidate other species, to fight each other, etc. There's just so many reasons, so it doesn't give us a good answer. Moving on, there's a few points here where he's actually defending the plant position, and one of those has to do with tooth decay, the claim by, you know, perhaps some meat lovers that because we get cavities from eating certain plant foods or from eating plants at all, that we are therefore not supposed to be eating them. A sort of a Weston A. Price Foundation take, which I have a whole video on, here he is. ...points against plant-based diets is going to be tooth decay. He then says something that I've mentioned a million times before is that there are so many different types of plant-based diets. You have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of plant varieties to choose from. And of course, you can be eating ones that are better or worse for your teeth. But the problem I've always had with this narrative is the fact that there are so many different plant-based diets. And I mean, if you're on the all lemon diet, it's called the scurvy 30, get it right. Obviously you're gonna have more acidity in your diet than you would if you were eating more alkaline fruits and vegetables. Studies have shown that vegetarians are likely to experience more tooth decay when compared to non-vegetarians. The studies have also shown that raw vegans have no increased risk for tooth decay when you compare them to carnivores and omnivores. It's pretty clear that we agree here, and I am happy that he linked both of those studies in the description below. But I would go further and add one more point on tooth structure that he didn't cover, and that is that most of these predators, these omnivorous mammals, have these shearing jaws that are like tin snips that can break bone. We don't have those, but somebody might argue, and they have argued to me in the past, that we don't actually get our meat from our teeth and hunting like these other animals. We do it with our hands and spears and stuff. So the question then becomes, did we internally evolve to handle a bunch of meat from eating it over time? Now for one of the most classic points here, the intestine ratio for omnivores versus carnivores versus herbivores. And here, I just have to fully disagree. I think he got something wrong here. But on average, the human intestines tend to be about five to seven times the length of our torso size. Now, when you look at lions, their intestines seem to be about less than five times the length of their torso size, while cows are somewhere around 20 times as long as their torso size. And if you're looking at herbivores that aren't uh, ruminants, that number is gonna get closer to the human, so you're gonna see that, see that intestinal length decrease. He then really puts us right on par with lions here, which would lead you to believe that we are supposed to be eating straight meat based off intestine length. Only five times our torso length. Time to fact check. There were no links in the description for this claim. And sadly, when you Google it, one of the first images is this chart, which does say 5X. However, this is from a severely biased paper about why we are meant to eat meat, and it does not give any supporting figures for that chart. It's just kind of pulled out to butt. Now he did say intestines plural, so I believe he's talking about the large and small intestines here. He said our torso. Looking to this study, our intestines total are about eight meters long, which equals 26 feet, which is quite ridiculous. And then looking at a few different sources on torso length, we're in at about half of a meter or one and a half feet. And therefore you can see that the result right off the bat is like 17.5 times, which is wildly different than the 5X that they had. However, I think this is part of the age old mix up here where torso and trunk length or body length are two different things. And that's how animals might be compared, you know, from the base of their neck to their butt. Now, so assuming that was the mistake that he made going to somebody who is not vegan, instead of me just giving you the answer as a vegan, we have a nutritionist, Kevin Bass here, who is not a vegan and claims to be sort of a nutritionist moderate. You know, he weighed in on a lengthy Twitter debate here, did some calculations, and based off the data that he looked at, which he links there, he says we land at a ratio of about 11 to 12x, which is clearly not in line with that lion predator. I mean, heck, our small intestine are the same 
same length as a lion, and lions obviously are much bigger than us. <laughs> but he does sort of ignore that he put us in that category, and he concludes that, yeah, we do seem to resemble herbivores. Observationally speaking, humans are more related to herbivores, digestively speaking, <laughs> that is. But simple observations can't always tell you where you stand in the ever-shifting landscape of the evolutionary process. Yes, observations can't tell us anything, but it also is the case that we have several streams of data here, and another very important one is that there are negative effects of eating meat based on how long our intestines are. Simple example, we have that sulfurous animal protein fermentation happening in the hindgut in the colon where bad things happen. It has negative inflammatory effects and DNA damaging effects on our cell walls there. Heme iron, also another effect there, why, why red meat is literally a carcinogen to the human anatomy. Worth mentioning, he didn't mention that at all. But as far as we know, this is not the case with an animal like a lion. They're not getting like colorectal cancer from gazelle. Another interesting aspect of the human digestive system is our tiny cecum. Now the cecum is the first part of the large intestine, but it really just means blind-ended pouch. Now in Herbivores, the cecum can be huge, and that's because it acts as a fermentation tank where you have tons of microbes breaking down plant fibers. But for humans, we don't do it like that, right? As we just discussed, we ferment all throughout the colon, so we don't need this large cecum, but at the same time, we're not getting near the degree of fermentation that you see in herbivores. This is again where I feel like a major point was left out and that is that there are different types of herbivores. He did mention ruminants, but he didn't go into things like frugivore and folivore. And our ancestors were very clearly like frugivore, folivore hybrids. They would have a larger cecum for digesting all of that foliage, those leaves. So they would need to ferment it, but then we didn't need to do that as much and it shrunk. Why didn't we need to do that as much? My personal take, based off the work of many like Karen Hardy and her team, that we have starch as a major evolutionary driver. And obviously starch doesn't need to be fermented in the cecum. We can digest it from cooking. And we'll cover that when we get to cooking, but let's move on again. Well, humans are omnivore, and you didn't need me to tell you that, right? The simple fact that you can get nutrition from a carrot and chicken alike tells us that you're an omnivore. If you wanna classify us as something avores because we can eat something, that logic opens you up to some issues. For example, that would kind of classify us as cannibals because we can and do eat other humans on occasion. Or you could call us Play-Doh-vores or Pencil-vores. Heck, this one French dude that I mentioned before ate an entire airplane and certainly got a little bit of nutrition, probably got some iron from those bolts that he ground up and ate over <laughs> weeks. But we're still anatomically not planivores, okay? You get what I'm saying? So the most important question then becomes what food groups promote a healthier state or trigger disease for a given anatomy, for our anatomy, for example. So even if we can consume a food group, is it having a negative effect on us? If it is, then we probably haven't adapted to eat it. And if you were to just find a little spaceship with a new creature and you wondered what it would eat, you would essentially feed it different foods and see how it reacted. Hopefully you'd have thousands of them and you could feed them thousands of different types of food. Thankfully, we have actually been doing that by doing nutritional research. Not on an alien species, that would be cool, but no, on humans. And we've discovered a lot and a lot of mechanistic things as well. You know, a lot of different components that are in meat and other animal products that we are clearly not adapted to eat because they have negative effects on us. Let's just list them off. We've got that inflammatory NEU5GC. We've got TMAO or trimethylamine and oxide, which damages arteries. Saturated animal fat and cholesterol lead to oxidized LDL, which is causally linked to atherosclerosis. We have bacterial endotox in meat, we get vitamin A toxicity from eating a liver of animals. You get heterocyclic amines from cooking the meat, which is how we claim to be adapted. That's carcinogen. And we get a boost in IGF-1, which fuels cancer. These are all nutritional reasons that we are maladapted to eat animals. And spoiler alert, he goes through the whole 20 minute video without mentioning the circulatory system at all, without mentioning atherosclerosis and heart disease, our number one killer, which would be a good indication of whether or not we're supposed to eat something. But he does have something to say about human nutrition and I just have to disagree with it a little bit. And truthfully, human anatomy can't give us an answer, but the thing is neither can our current understanding of 
physiology or nutrition. They just aren't ready to give such a definitive call. No, overwhelmingly plants in their natural form, which he is against processed foods, which I agree with, but plants in their natural form like whole grains and vegetables and fruits all associated over and over and over again with lower mortality. Yet when we look to meat consumption, we often see association with increased mortality. So yeah, that's not adding up to no answers. And what role does cooking our food play in the bioavailability availability of these nutrients. You have to ask yourself, given our ability to speed up digestion through the cooking process, is it even a meaningful question to ask what we were meant to eat? And I do think cooking changes the equation and that brings me once again back to starch. Again, very important for human evolution. You no longer need that cecum, but you can get a ton of calories. And again, our body runs on glucose, our brain runs on glucose, and that is what made us human, is our brain. You know, moving from being a frugivore, folivore to something more of like a starchivore. Not that I'm saying that we didn't eat any meat, I just don't think that it played as big of a role as people claim it did. And honestly, the the world already does run on starch. Human history has run on starch. We could build cities at all and grow larger populations because of the starchy plants that we farmed. And of course, for unknown hundreds of thousands of years, we could have been sort of horticulturally growing starchy tubers and on and on. I mean, look, diet is so variable too. You have to think like, people have evolved eating different types of diets, whether you're down in Peru or maybe you're in Siberia, right? Or you're an Inuit. Just real quick from this Lancet study, Inuit mummies had the highest rate of atherosclerosis of any of the mummies they looked at across the world. So I don't think that that's a case that they've adapted to it. And I completely understand plant-based diets, especially from a philosophical and ethical standpoint. I'm, I'm not gonna tell you what you can or can't eat, but personally, I believe that we just need to stop pretending that we're built for anything other than survival and reproduction. If you prefer to eat something or if it makes you feel better, all the power to you. But you just have to realize that it doesn't work for everybody, nor should it work for everybody. If I were to do a more blunt translation of what he just said, it would be vegans should shut up and stop trying to tell other people to be vegan or promote their vegan diet, really. But I've yet to see a strong anatomical case for why there are certain people that just couldn't be vegan or especially mostly plant-based, which is sort of what he's implying here. Every human has that same intestinal tract that is capable of getting colorectal cancer from meat. We are all, as far as I know, capable of getting atherosclerosis from animal fat and cholesterol and on and on, all those things I mentioned before. And I would say if the panda, who is clearly originally anatomically developed to rip flesh apart, can then go vegan, uh, yeah, you can do it too. In conclusion, while I largely agree, I think as you just saw, there are so many mechanistic reasons that we are maladapted to be consuming all these animal products. You know, it's my official position that we did eat these animal products. It's just clearly we did not eat enough of them for a long enough period of time you know, to become resistant to the diseases that they clearly cause that are our leading killing diseases today. I mean, circulatory diseases, several of our leading killers are circulatory diseases. And you might be thinking, there's so much more on this topic that you could have covered. Like what about stomach size and how, you know, wolves can consume 25% of their own body weight after they make a kill and we can hardly eat anything at once. We can eat like a pound of food, like less than 1% of our body weight. I know some of you are like, I can eat more. But the point is we have so many things pointing to the unlikeliness that we ate a large amount of meat throughout human history because we are poorly adapted to it. If we are omnivores, we are really crappy omnivores. So maybe you can have that one. That can be your title. <laughs> All right, let me know down below what you think about all of this, if there are any points I missed. And of course you can click on that plant-based bundle to get just thousands of dollars worth of amazing knowledge and also help me out. This is something that majorly supports me as well. And if you're anything like me, uh, definitely click below now and get it because otherwise, you know, I would probably forget to buy it. So <laughs> feel free to like and subscribe and all that stuff too. And thanks for watching.